In today's digital age, misinformation spreads faster than a wildfire. It's an unfortunate reality, but a reality nonetheless. We're living in an era often dubbed as the misinformation age, where the distinction between fact and fiction can become blurred beyond recognition. Every day we're bombarded with a deluge of information, but not all of it is accurate. Fake news hoaxes and disinformation campaigns have become increasingly prevalent. They manipulate public opinion, stir up unnecessary panic and in some extreme cases even incite violence and cause real-world harm. These false narratives aren't just misleading, they can be downright dangerous. They erode trust, fuel conflict and polarize societies. And the worst part? They spread at an unprecedented speed reaching millions in mere seconds. In this digital age where anyone can be a broadcaster and everyone is a receiver, it's not just about consuming information. More than ever it's crucial to be a critical consumer of information. Source criticism is your best tool against misinformation. So, what exactly is source criticism? Simply put, it's the practice of evaluating and analyzing a source of information to determine its credibility. It's not about doubting everything you come across, rather, it's about being a discerning consumer of information. Think of it as being a detective in the world of data. You're questioning, you're verifying, you're seeking the truth. It's about asking those key questions. Who is providing this information? What is their intent? How reliable are they? Is there evidence supporting their claims? In this era where information is at our fingertips, it's easy to get caught up in the rush of the digital wave. But it's crucial to pause, ponder, and probe. Not everything that glitters is gold, and not every source that speaks is truthful. Remember, in the battle against misinformation, source criticism is your shield. The first step in source criticism is to consider the source. Now, what does that mean exactly? It's all about evaluating the credibility and reliability of the source you're dealing with. It's akin to checking the ingredients of a food item before consuming it. You wouldn't want to consume something potentially harmful, would you? Similarly, when it comes to information, you want to ensure it's coming from a trustworthy place. Check the author's credentials. Is this person an expert in the field? Do they have a history of producing reliable work? Next, consider the reputation of the publication. Is it known for its rigorous fact-checking and ethical journalism? Or has it been called out for spreading misinformation? Remember, the goal here isn't to dismiss a source outright but to critically evaluate its reliability. This step might take a bit of time, but it's worth it. After all, a credible source is the backbone of credible information. The second step is to check the date. Why does the date matter, you ask? Well, the date of publication is crucial in determining the relevance and accuracy of information. Picture this. You stumble upon an article about the latest technological advancements. Exciting, right? But wait a minute. The article was published five years ago. What seemed like a cutting-edge revelation then may not hold water today. Technology evolves at lightning speed, and so does our knowledge. Outdated information can lead to misunderstanding and misinformation. It's like trying to navigate today's city streets with a map from the 1990s. You'll likely end up lost, confused, and late for your appointment. The same goes for information. Using outdated facts and figures can lead you astray, causing you to draw incorrect conclusions or make ill-informed decisions. Remember, in the world of source criticism, the date of publication is not just a random string of numbers, it's a vital checkpoint. Timely information is accurate information. The third step in source criticism is to verify the information. Now that we've considered the source and checked the date, it's time to roll up our sleeves and dig a little deeper. Verification is the process of confirming the truth or accuracy of the information we have at hand. It's crucial to cross-check facts with multiple reliable sources. Think of it as a safety net. If one source fails to provide accurate information, others may catch the fall. But remember, not all sources are created equal. Some are more reliable than others. So it's essential to use discretion and discernment when choosing your sources. Now let's talk about distinguishing between facts, opinions, and propaganda. Facts are objective truths that can be verified. For example, the Earth revolves around the Sun, that's a fact. Opinions, on the other hand, are subjective and vary from person to person. If I say I think pizza is the best food in the world, that's an opinion, not a fact. But what about propaganda? Propaganda is information particularly of a biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. It's often hard to distinguish from fact, as it can be cloaked in the guise of truth. But with critical thinking and careful examination, you can spot it. So, how do you verify the information? There are several ways. 
One is to use fact-checking websites. These sites have teams of researchers who scrutinize claims and verify their accuracy. Another method is to cross-reference the information with other reputable sources. If multiple sources report the same information, it's likely to be accurate. But remember, even reliable sources can sometimes get things wrong. So, don't stop at one or two sources. The more you cross-check, the better. And one last thing, in our quest for truth, it's crucial to remain open to being wrong. It's okay to change our minds when presented with new, verified information. After all, that's how we learn and grow. Trust but verify, that's the mantra. The fourth step is to look for bias. Now, bias is a term we've all heard, but what does it actually mean in the context of source criticism? Well, in this context, bias refers to a slant or skew in the presentation of information, influenced by the author's personal beliefs, values, or agenda. Like a pair of tinted glasses, bias can color the way information is presented, shading facts with personal opinions, and often leading to a distortion of the truth. The challenge here is that bias is not always glaringly obvious, it can be subtle, creeping into the tone of the text, the choice of words, or even in what is left unsaid. So how do we identify bias? First, consider the author and their potential motivations. Do they have a vested interest in the topic? Could their position or affiliation influence their perspective? For example, a report on climate change authored by an oil company may have a different perspective than one written by an environmental organization. Next, analyze the language used. Is it emotionally charged or loaded with value-laden terms? Does it make generalizations or absolute statements without sufficient evidence? Such tactics can be indicators of bias. Also, consider the balance of perspectives. Does the source present multiple viewpoints, or is it one-sided? A balanced source will typically present various perspectives on an issue, allowing the reader to form their own opinion. Remember, the presence of bias does not automatically render a source unreliable. Rather, it's essential to recognize and account for this bias when interpreting the information. This could mean seeking out additional sources to cross-reference or simply acknowledging the bias as part of your analysis. Bias is a part of human nature, and it's virtually impossible to find a source that's completely free of it. The key is not to avoid biased sources but to approach them with a critical eye, using them as a piece of the larger puzzle. Understanding bias helps you see the full picture. Now that we know the steps, it's time to apply source criticism in our daily lives. Imagine you're scrolling through your news feed and you come across a headline that catches your interest. It's a shocking claim about climate change. Instead of accepting it at face value, let's put our source criticism skills to work. First consider the source. Is this a reputable news outlet or a blog known for sensationalism? If it's the latter, proceed with caution. This doesn't mean the information is false but it should alert you to the potential for bias or misinformation. Next, check the date. If the article is from several years ago, the information might be outdated. Science, especially in fields like climate change, is always evolving. Old data might not paint an accurate picture of the current situation. Now it's time to verify the information. Does the article cite reliable sources or provide links to the original research? If it doesn't, that's a red flag. Look for other articles or reports on the same topic from different sources. If you find conflicting information, dig deeper. Lastly, look for bias. Is the article presenting facts objectively, or is it pushing a particular agenda? Remember, even reputable sources can have a slant. It's essential to recognize this, and to seek out diverse perspectives to gain a well-rounded understanding. Applying source criticism is like becoming a detective of information. It requires a keen eye, a healthy dose of skepticism, and a commitment to truth. It's not just about being a passive consumer of information, but an active participant in your own education. This isn't just applicable to news articles, it works for social media posts, podcasts, documentaries, even conversations. The more you practice, the more natural it becomes. You'll start noticing patterns, questioning claims, and making more informed decisions. Remember, in this age of information, it's not just about what you know, but how you know it. With source criticism, you're not just consuming information, you're engaging with it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.